I'm here at the California Wolf Center in Julian, California. And as you can see, these are Alaskan gray wolves. They look very cute. They look like big fluffy dogs with sort of semi-droopy tails, you know, and they're just very attractive, majestic animals. So what they're doing in a lot of these cases is scent marking. Uh, this one's just urinating and they like to rub their bodies, the sides of their torsos against the enclosures and the bushes nearby. Essentially what they're doing is they're trying to tell humans to stay away on our side of the fence, you know, and not go in their enclosure. So these enclosures have about two acres of land in them and as you can see the trails are well worn because they keep running in the same spots. Those of you who are dog owners may have also observed that your pet dogs tend to rub themselves against uh, couches and other household objects, walls, you know. Uh, they have the same inherited evolutionary behaviors. The gray wolf is the progenitor species for all breeds of dogs we have today. Humans basically domesticated the gray wolf. There are theories that gray wolves may have in fact domesticated themselves by approaching human hunters cooking meat around campfires. So any wolf that was isolated from its pack or you know, didn't have a pack may have scavenged from human campsites or humans might have seen the wolf approaching and thrown some food to it. And over time, humans may have adopted some of these as pets because they ate in hunting. So that's essentially how we got dogs. And you know, we applied our own uh, selection pressure through selective breeding over 10,000 years or, you know, well, not even 10,000 years, probably hundreds of thousands of years. And so in the beginning of this video, I have a link to the video of Mexican wolves. They're a subspecies of the gray wolf. So the gray wolf is Canis lupus, and that's its Latin, you know, binomial scientific name. So there are five subspecies of gray wolf, with the Alaskan gray wolf being the largest and the Mexican wolf having coloration and appearance more like a coyote. It's often confused for a coyote. It's the smallest one and it's the most highly endangered. So unlike in the movie The Grey, where Liam Neeson and his buddies get mercilessly hunted down by wolves and torn apart, uh, the tour guide basically said gray wolves are very skittish. Like coyotes, they exhibit a lot of the same behaviors I've noticed. Uh, they're basically more dominant versions of coyotes. They will kill coyotes because they're bigger, stronger, and faster. Although the coyote is no slouch in its own right. It just doesn't have the kind of uh, teamwork and size to achieve the same kind of dominance that the wolf has. So basically, wolves trot around and they kind of look at you and they're always in a state of trotting and running away. Uh, my friend was kneeling down and getting really close to the fence to get some footage and one of those coyotes that was trotting by right by the fence made eye contact with him so they're said to be extremely intelligent animals and unlike dogs um, they have all their you know raw native traits intact you know they're our dogs are basically watered down versions of wolves because we've selected for beauty over many many generations of dogs and thus, you know, intelligence and other things, you know, coordination, resistance to diseases and so forth. Uh, a lot of their social behaviors just got thrown out the window because we chose uh, beauty and docileness in our dogs. So wolves and dogs are of the same species, essentially, and they can interbreed. So a dog-wolf hybrid would become a wolf-dog and either of those two can also hybridize with a coyote so they're also very closely related but the coyote is a different species so when I said there were five subspecies of the gray wolf I think that's just for North America and maybe Central America actually there's 37 subspecies of the gray wolf around the world so the progenitor ancestor of gray wolves and coyotes was actually you know a narrow-headed canid that existed at the end of the Miocene era all the way through to the early Pleistocene up until 1.8 million years ago. This ancestor was named Canis lepophagus or the hair-eating wolf or the Johnston's coyote.